Well, good evening, everyone. You just watched the Bills fall to Tennessee 34 31 in dramatic fashion. Let's listen in to some post game reaction, immediate post game reaction right here. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. Good football team that we lost to. Um, but at the end of the day, we just didn't play well enough to win. Uh, we, we let him. We let him out a few times, um, and when that happens, I mean, you watch it on film. You can watch all the games on film, and and know once he gets, you know, <clears throat> through that front line, it's hard to bring him down. And uh, he got through a few times, um, and from there, the guy's huge. The guy's fast. <laughs> Just you, know, you got to find a way to to get him down. That first round play was, it was on me. I, you know. It was on yeah, everybody. It, it, Bad angle. Yeah, belly kick. Um, you know, I was in the gap. Uh, you know, I just felt like I could have made the play. You know, he hit me, ran right through the gap. You know, I just gotta, I just gotta make that play. Can you give us maybe elaborate on your thoughts on the on the last play of the game there and why you like that? What? We, we trust we, our team. We trust our yeah. coaches. We trust seventeen. Like, I mean, I, I'm I'm with coach ten out of ten times. If you want to go for that? Yep. I lose as a team. And you know, at the end of the day, coach made that call. And we was all we was all riding with him, and uh, you know, we just we just came up a little short. How much of it is the element of pride, and you know, you're a good team, and you like that play because you want to be put in that position as players to, to decide it right there. I mean, just like Poe just said, we we call it pride, call it whatever whatever you want. You know, with the ball in 17's hand, fourth and one. Um, like I said, Sean made a hell of a call. And we're riding with that all day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. to the loss in Tennessee tonight. You just watched the game here on 7ABC. As you know, the Bills could have kicked a field goal to tie the game late, but Sean McDermott decided to go for the win. Did not quite work out. The Bills fall to the Titans, 34 31 complete coverage of this dramatic and perhaps disappointing loss tonight. Matt Bove joins us from Nissan Stadium in just a moment. But we begin tonight with Adam Unger with a recap of this heartbreaking finish. Adam. Yeah, Jeff, a lot of talk in that press conference with Poyer and Hyde about 17 Josh Allen and 22 Derrick Henry. The bread and butter for both sides and both of them saw plenty of action. We'll show you how this one went down, taking you to the early second quarter of this one. Titans ball on their own 24 yard line. And here's Derrick Henry doing Derrick Henry things. That's the play Poyer was talking about. Off to the races, 76 yards to the house for the Titans' first lead of the game. The answer for Buffalo, of course, through the air with Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things. Flushed out of the pocket on a third and long and slings it for a wide open Cole Beasley to take back the lead. These two teams went back and forth all game long, but King Henry gets the last laugh. Three touchdowns on the day for him as Tennessee wins 34-31. to 31. That is the score that set up the call for Sean McDermott to go for it on fourth and one, which the Bills, of course, ultimately did not get. So now we go live to Nashville with sports director Matt Bove. Hey, Adam. Yeah, it's such a cliche. People say it all the time that football is a game of inches, and we quite literally saw that at the end of this game. And that's going to be what everybody talks about. The decision to go for it on fourth and inches. Josh Allen looks like he slipped, and he came up just a little bit short. The offensive line got pushed back. You can think whatever you want. I can tell you the math says that you go for it in that situation. You go for a win. I know a lot of fans would say that you go and just kick the field goal and see what happens in overtime. But the Bills went for a win, and as you heard Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde say, they trust their quarterback. They trust the bread and butter, like Adam said, of their team, and they ultimately just came up short. You can like the decision and hate the results, and it feels like that's what we saw today. But really, as a whole, the Bills made too many mistakes in this game. You also heard Jordan Poyer mention the huge Derrick Henry touchdown run, 76 yards. He felt like he could have made a better play on that and maybe, you know, stop him for a 15-yard gain as opposed to a 76-yard touchdown. There's just so many little things that go into it. And the Bills gave up 34 points to the Titans today. Going into this game, the most points the Bills had allowed this season was 23. So, yeah, you can point to both sides and blame somebody and say, hey, the defense needed to be better. You can say, hey, the offense should have had that last play, and both can ultimately be right. So the Bills, they come up short. And one thing, if you want a little glimmer of hope here, 
last year. The Bills lost in heartbreaking fashion in the game before the bye week. That was to the Arizona Cardinals on the Hale Murray play. They didn't lose again until the AFC championship game. So I am not saying the Bills are going to win out from here, but I'm just saying sometimes these teams learn from the mistakes like the ones we saw on the field tonight. So a heartbreaking loss for the Bills. They head into the bye week four and two. They still lead the division in the AFC East, but I know this is going to be a tough one to swallow for Bills fans everywhere. We're live at Nissan Stadium, Matt Bove, 7 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Matt. We'll check back in with some post-game reactions. Still waiting on Coach Sean McDermott tonight. Now, despite the loss, Matt just hit on this. The Bills hit their bye week, going to get some time off. Still sitting pretty in the division in the AFC East. They have a two-game lead over the Patriots, New England, lost their fourth home game of the season just last night. The Jets, as you see, are one and four coming off their bye week. The Dolphins are one and five, losing their fifth straight yesterday in London. Now, Bills Mafia was well represented in the Music City. Thousands of Buffalo Bills fans spent their weekend, the long weekend in Nashville, getting a taste of the city before taking in tonight's game. In fact, according to Vivid Seats tonight, Bills fans made up 58% of the crowd at the game. Remember, this is a Titans home game in Tennessee. Now, fans who stayed home still got to enjoy a Bills tailgate experience tonight. The transit drive-in hosted another watch party this evening at the theater in Lockport with some cooler temperatures moving in. Fans got a taste of what games later on in the year might feel like. Well, we've been waiting all year. We're waiting for a nice cold night game. Here we are. I actually live uh, right down the road, and we came out here a few times last year, and it was such a good time that we had to come back. We were looking for it all year. Well, the game on one screen, another screen show tonight's episode of The Voice. Joshua Vacanti of Lockport advancing on tonight's show. Governor Kathy Hochul tonight showing off her Bills spirit in New York City. She invited Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin to a Bills bar in Midtown Manhattan. They enjoyed some wings and the bat along with the game tonight. Now tonight's game, a long awaited cash cow for bars and restaurants really across Western New York. They could not take advantage of these primetime matchups in the very same way just a year ago. Natalie Fami tonight went to one local brewery for tonight's Monday night moneymaker. The Bills fever is contagious and just kind of spreads out throughout the entire facility. Even when the Bills are on the road, that doesn't stop fans from coming together. General Manager of Community Beer Works, Joseph Cregan, says they see about 50 people in the brewery on game nights. We want to give people the experience of like kind of feeling like a tailgate that just never ends. It's great to be a Bills fan and with the year that's going on right now, I mean, where else would you rather be? Last year at this time, restaurants had capacity limits and couldn't host large events for Bills games. Korean says game nights bring in 50% more revenue than a typical night. And it helps when the team wins and fans want to keep the night going. As long as they keep winning, we keep winning. The goal is to make fans feel comfortable. This is like their personal living room that they have that they can come and watch games now. We're relaxing, just good vibes all around, like comfortable place to be is super important to us. Fans say being surrounded by other Bills Mafia members adds to the experience. The camaraderie is with between different strangers and everything. It's one common goal of just being a Bills fan. So a stranger could be your best friend by the end of the night. And Community Beer Works stays open late on game days to make sure Bills Mafia can have a full experience even when the team's away. In Buffalo, Natalie Fami, 7 Eyewitness News. Well, all of Western New York ready for some football on the national stage again tonight. The Peace Bridge was lit in blue and red lights to support the Bills on Monday Night Football. Saw a lot of great pictures and videos of Bills fans tonight, young and old with four legs as well. You can share your picks with us on Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag fan feed or see it on seven. We want to remind you we are still waiting to hear tonight from Coach McDermott and Josh Allen. We'll get back to Nashville as soon as they become available with more post game reaction. Well, all new tonight, one of our neighboring states has just reached a new threshold in sports betting. Much of that is thanks to something that is not yet available here in New York. The state of New Jersey reports taking in more than a billion dollars in sports wagers last month alone. That's a new state record. They say more than 90% of that came through online betting. New York has approved online sports betting, but it's still not in place. New York has not yet picked a vendor to operate a virtual sports book. Former Buffalo Sabres star has now been suspended and could potentially face legal trouble. The NHL suspending Evander Kane for 21 games. They say he gave the league a fake COVID-19 vaccination card. Kane has not played yet this season. 
he will lose more than a quarter of his $7 million salary. Using a counterfeit vaccination card is illegal, comes with heavy fines and jail time, potential jail time under federal law. All right, up next here tonight, still waiting to hear from head coach Sean McDermott, Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen on the loss. We'll hear from them live from down in Nashville. Up next, still seeking answers. The family of a long missing woman has a measure of closure. The questions they still have weeks after her body was found. I'm meteorologist Andy Parker. Some crisp autumn air out here tonight, but we'll be sunny and warm on Tuesday. I'll take a look at your midweek forecast straight ahead. Welcome back. Flags being flown at half staff across New York State and across the country tonight in honor of the late Colin Powell. Powell broke barriers in the U.S. military. He was the first African-American to serve as chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, then again as Secretary of State. Powell served in that role under President George W. Bush, but he crossed party lines to endorse President Barack Obama in 2008. Well, he's not only a dear friend and a patriot, one of our great military leaders and a man of overwhelming decency. Colin Powell was 84 years old. He suffered from Parkinson's and multiple melanoma. That is a blood cancer that heavily compromised his immune system. His family says he was fully vaccinated but died after contracting COVID-19. The CDC says this sort of breakthrough case is exceedingly rare. They say more than 187 million Americans are fully vaccinated. About 6,200 have died from a COVID-related illness. That makes the vaccine 99.997% effective at preventing death. Well, the debate over vaccine mandates only getting louder across the country. Thousands of protesters hit the streets in California. They oppose the Golden State's vaccine mandate for students. Some parents say they're ready to homeschool their children because of it. I will never vaccinate my kids. Okay. I will never vaccinate. So you would pull them out? I will pull them out. I will quit my job. I will teach them at home if I have to. All teachers in California must be vaccinated. The mandate for students goes into effect as soon as their age group is eligible. Vaccines are also required for 10 other diseases, including measles and mumps. All right, want to get you back down to Nashville. Bills fall tonight 34-31 to the Tennessee Titans. Here's head coach Sean McDermott. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. At the end of the day, we didn't get the job done. I didn't get the job done. And, and uh, you know, um, they did a good job in the red zone. We should have scored. You know, our red zone stats, I think, were two for five. They were three for three. Um, so, um, you know, and then the points have to, off the turnover, um, we got, they got seven. We came away with three. So just some of the differences in the game. Um, but at the end of the day, the result's the result. And uh, we got we to do a better job. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to tell you right now as we sit here without looking at it and um but we've had we've had some struggles in the red zone. Um, you know, uh same last year coming here. So Hey Sean, obviously Henry had a great night for them, but it looked like your fast defense struggled in the second half. That helped completed a lot of balls over the middle. Yeah. Pinpoint maybe what was going wrong there? Well, it's not just one thing, I don't think Sal, I think you know, some of it we were, um, you know, sucking up on the play action a little bit there with the with the play fake and opens up the middle. And that's where and they've got good receivers. And uh, that's what 22 does to you. It makes you commit to the run. And, and uh, so, you know, we could have done some other things too as well. And we'll look at it as coaches. Sean, you lost in a similarly tough fashion last year going into the bye in Arizona. It came out of the bye really strong. I think you won every game after that point. How do you, how did you use that? pain of that loss to kind of fuel the rest of the season and how do you try to do that again this year? Yeah, every year is different. Um, you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, you want to win every game and, and uh, you know, now we got a, we got a week to, uh, to sit on this one and, and learn from it and, and come back stronger. So that's the goal every week, Jay, and uh, that'll be the goal uh, next week as well. Yeah. In such a short amount of time, how difficult has this been for him and the team? 
Yeah, unfortunate news. Um, you know, Brian's been through a lot over the last uh, two or three weeks here, and, and so, you know, our prayers and thoughts are obviously with him and his family, and, um, you know, never want to see someone go through go through that. Um, it's just unfortunate. John, how frustrated are you with the penalty? Last week, I think it was 10, it didn't end up mattering. This week, it seemed like every one was a, was a big penalty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're big, Sal, and, and it comes back to – making sure we're using the right technique and moving our feet, using our hands, getting our hands inside. Um, had one or two pre-snap penalties also you could throw in there, I believe. And, and so, um, you know, discipline. Discipline's important and if you want to be a good football team. So the guys are always uh, talking about how much confidence you have in them and how that inspires them to play at your best. You obviously have tremendous confidence in them having them go for it on, on fourth and one there at the end. How do you maintain that type of motivation among the guys? How do you have them keep their heads high after coming up short in that instance? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to believe in my players and our football team and, and our coaches, and, and uh, you know, we'll learn from this, and, and we, we try to move forward and, and get better because of it. That's what you do. It's a, it's a season of ups and downs, and so um, it's a team that stays together the longest. It's going to give themselves the best chance at the end. Sean, what went into the decision to uh, not dress AJ? Yeah, I just felt like, um, you know, we wanted to dress some other guys and um, look at some other guys with, with Harry and, and uh, um, you know, dressing the F.A. and just looking at trying to find matchups as well. So. Sean, on that fourth down play, does Josh have a, kind of a decision there to make or did he lose his footing a little bit there? When you kind of the yeah, I just got a little bit of a sh video of it before I came in here and it just looked like we, there was some – Penetration there off our left side, and and they pinched down. Um, so it looked like there was an opportunity, but you know at the end of the day, I trust them, and uh, and I'll trust them again if we're in that situation again. So um, you know, uh, I'll take Josh Allen, um, as you said, Sal, ten times out of ten. So give them the credit; they made the play they had to make uh, when the game was on the line. Yeah, I, I, you know. I, I didn't. I, it looked like you know they had one player in what became the B gap over there, and and uh, he penetrated, and it looked like he knocked us back a little bit there um, off that left side there. Sean, in that situation, do you put much thought into picking a field goal there? Is that something that you seriously go back and forth on, and what led to not doing that? Yeah, I mean we're we're this far from from winning the game, <laughs> and uh, I owe that to my players, and um, you know I believe in my players. I believe in our quarterback. Um, so I trust my guys. Uh, obviously, we didn't get it done in this case, um, but I trust my players. Uh, yeah, well, he did. He was, uh, you know, working through it a little bit there, and then when we, when we got him off the field, we were able to evaluate, evaluate him a little bit more. Um, so I thought he did a good job pushing through it there. Yeah, I mean, most quarterback sneaks are there's a there's a feel or a read element involved, Tim, and uh, Josh is usually spot on with those. You've seen him have a lot of success in those situations, and um, you know, so again, give them the credit. They made the play when they had to make make one, and um, you know, felt you know, hey, if we're that far from potentially winning the game, right there was the best thing we could do. Uh, we hadn't stopped them on defense um, for for. A number of drives there in the second half, really. So, um, but again, felt felt like we could go and win the game right there, and uh, obviously didn't get it done. Well, we'll go back and look at it. I, you know, I just feel like the thing that jumps off the the page at me is uh, number one is our guys fought right. It was uh, it was a it was an intense football game back and forth like we ex expected, um, but the red zone. The turnover, um, you know, the difference of points right there. That's a potentially different game, but it's not. I'm not going to play the woulda, shoulda, coulda. It's we got to learn from that and get better, and then we've got to fix some things on defense as well. Um, and then the penalties overall. You know, we can't kill ourselves with penalties like that. How much did you feel that it was you know, obviously Derek ran it really well, but the defense kind of wore down as the game went along? 
Well, that's what they try and do. You know, they keep pounding you, keep pounding you, keep pounding you, and, and that, especially with the wide zone. Uh, he had a couple a couple of them there in the second half that, you know, they expect you at some point to, to wear down. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if it was as much us wearing down as just um, not playing with, not getting off blocks. Uh, in your gap's one thing, but you got to shed the block. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Bills head coach Sean McDermott reacting to the Bills 34-31. Heartbreaking loss there in Tennessee. Asked a lot of questions specific to that final play of the game in terms of Josh Allen. He, uh, Sean McDermott said, quote, I trust him. I'll trust him again. The Bills fall 34-31. We want to get back down to Nashville as soon as Josh Allen becomes available to continue our post-game coverage tonight. But moving along, all new this evening, millions of dollars worth of equipment from the centerpiece of the Buffalo Billion is now for sale. A spokesperson for New York Create says they are selling more than $127 million in equipment from the Riverbend facility in South Buffalo. Tesla and Panasonic have used that equipment in the years since the Buffalo Billion was passed. About $39 million in equipment has already been sold. Told you we'd get back to Nashville when Josh Allen was available. And just like that, he we're is as he reacts to the 34 31 loss on the road. Didn't turn out in our favor today. We were 2 of 5 in the red zone. We can't do that uh, against a team like this. Um, so, you know, a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda's. But at the end of the day, you know, um, 4 and 2 into the bye week, you know, going back to last year, um, taking a loss the way we did against Arizona, Hail Mary bye week. Uh, this is a resilient team. I got no doubt that, you know, we're going to use this to fuel us and uh, be ready to go in two weeks. Josh, you said you didn't have the greatest footing. Did you slip, and had you noticed footing as a problem leading up to that? I mean, I was just trying to, just trying to find a, a window to get in there, and um, you know, quarterback sneaks aren't the funnest play by any means. Um, you know, there's a, I got to find a way to get a, get a first down there. You know, so it happens. Just not executing how we should. Um, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot a couple times with penalties. Um, you know, I, I gotta it's gotta be better for us. You know, uh, in the red zone. So uh, it's no secret two or five again against a team like this. It's not gonna win you a football game. And um, you know, we go three or five, we win that game. But um, again, a lot of shit could have us. That's a really good team. They had a really good plan. Um, obviously, on offense, they've got some really good players over there. So. Uh, you can't give those, give them those opportunities and not not convert. Uh, you know when you got to put six on the board. Josh, did you feel like you had that first down uh, on the play before the sneak, uh, and did you get any explanation as to why there wasn't any kind of a review? Uh, no explanation. Um, I, I don't know. I I did it in hopes of trying to get the first down. Um, you know, I think they looked at it on video, and you know I think the call was it was a good call. So uh, again, it's a game of inches, and. Um, Again, so many shoulda, coulda, woulda's that we, we're going to look back at this film and uh, you know, feel even worse than we do right now. Um, but again, it, it's one game. Uh, like I said, we're not going to try to blow this out of proportion, um, learn from it, and, and move on. You mentioned the Arizona game and the pain that you took into the bye week and how you, your team responded in a positive way. How, how did you do that last year, and how do you try to duplicate that this year? I mean, I think it's very similar feelings, you know, the way we lost both of these games. and. Um, you know, typically you don't carry anything over from year to year, but we do have that type of experience uh, going back to last year and uh, just coming out of the bye week, you know, really hungry, really ready, and, uh, you know, we got to go and do that again. You know, we got to put this one behind us as quickly as we can, um, get our bodies back. I know we, we had a couple injuries tonight, so uh, get back on, on track with those things and um, start looking to, to put together a game plan. I think we got Miami in two weeks. Josh, everybody that's been out here so far has kind of said, look, if we can get 17 with the ball in his hands, Yeah, I take a lot of pride in it, and um, you know, I, I love Coach McDermott for giving me that opportunity. You know, and I got to go out there and um, prove him right. You know, sometimes the plays you know, don't go your ways. They they get paid on that side of the ball too. And uh, like I said, they had a they had a good game plan. That's a really good team. Um, and hopefully, we see them see the game, see them again. You know, because uh, again, the way they're playing right now, you know, I expect them to you know, make a run, and um, got a lot of respect for them. Oh, can you speak on that? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what you want. You want your uh, your coach to have that belief in you, and 
um, you know, who better to have the ball in their hands than 17 is the best player we got. So, um, you know, nobody's mad at anybody for any calls. You know, it just comes down to we got to execute better than they do, and we didn't. So. Um, you know, I'd have to look at this film and see if there's any, you know, common factors. Um, ultimately, it comes down to execution, and it starts with me. So I got to be better, better with the ball in my hands, um, you know, and put us in a better position to to try to score touchdowns instead of field goals. And um, again, with a team like this, how good they are, um, you know, we know that's not going to cut it. So it's something that we gotta we gotta focus on and, and learn from. And um, like I said, I got no doubt that that this team will. Josh, the final score aside. Feeling of this offense, you got people involved who aren't necessarily involved every week. Tommy Sweeney scores a touchdown. You know, Diggs has his one of his best games. Cole has one of his best games. You just take us through the offense and, and getting this, getting everybody involved, and, and how important that is for you. You know, uh, we moved the ball really well tonight. Um, again, just kind of taking what the defense gave me early on and, and allowing our guys to make some plays. And I think we did a good job with throwing after the catch. Guys getting open, finding zones. Um, you know, so when you kind of have that feeling of being able to move the ball and you kind of stall out there in the red zone, it's it's never a good feeling because you know we want to score points. That's our job, we score touchdowns. And uh, again, we just didn't do a good enough job with that tonight. But uh, seeing some guys get involved, getting you know Cole back involved in the offense, the way uh, he played tonight was awesome, and uh, we're going to continue to need that going forward. Hey, Cole, you guys first it was six nothing. You guys were kind of in control. They hadn't done a thing, and when he broke that long touchdown. Was that kind of the signal that, I mean, I guess you knew it going in, but was that kind of the signal that, man, this is going to be a long slugfest of a night? Um, no, there were no thoughts like that. It's it's a one-play-at-a-time mentality. So, I mean, you never know how to, how a game's going to play out. And, um, you know, we don't really focus on, on the other side of the ball. We just got to execute on our side and focus on what we have to do. And um, there were a lot of things we could have done better, you know, and, and you always feel that way in a game like this. But... Um, no, there were no thoughts um, about like if it was going to be a long game or not. We were just um, next play mentality. Josh, you always talk about learning from whatever happens. So even though the drive didn't end the way you want, that circumstance, down, trying to drive on the road, learning from that, it seemed to be a hard thing to replicate in any other way than actually what you just had. How big is that to at least learn from what you guys did today and help you going forward in those spots? Yeah, two-minute situations, um, again, you, like you said, you can't replicate those in practice or in walkthroughs. Uh, we haven't been in, in many situations like that this year. So to kind of have that, again, every everything you can um, learn from, you know, is a plus. I know, you know, we didn't win the game, but there's a lot to learn from from that drive. Um, you know, and we got to we gotta work on it and, and move forward. Well, they went, you had two uh, targets in the first drive tonight, but there was a chance to get to the ball. Did you know that was going to be part of the game plan? Um, I mean, you never know how the game's really going to go, but, um, you know, I knew there would be a chance, so um, that's really all you can you can really look for, and, um, you know, there, there's still some plays that I feel like I left out there. Me and Josh missed on a third down. Um, that was crucial earlier in the game, so, um, you know, I was, I was glad to, to be involved, but, you know, I'd rather not be involved in win than be involved in lose, so. Yeah, I mean, um, huge shout out to Dawson. You know, he, I don't know what's wrong with his hand, but I know it's, it's not great. It's his throwing hand, and I was trying to call the play off. Um, I was shaking my hands at Dave's like, "Don't, don't call it. We can't do it." And he looked at me and said, "I got it. I'll get it to you." So, um, you know, to again put your body on the line like that and, and grit through it. That was a big time play, and uh, you know, got a. That's that's awesome when, when a teammate is willing to do that, and um, that's why we love him. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bills quarterback Josh Allen, wide receiver Cole Beasley reacting in Nashville to the 34-31 loss to the Tennessee Titans. Our sports team will have much more coverage coming up in just a couple minutes right here on 7ABC. Also tonight, community groups teaching people about other countries through food. The International Institute of Buffalo 
hosted the first of three Buffalo Without Borders to Go series. Tonight, the Institute gave out food from local restaurants to people who live locally but came here from another country. It's a great way to sample and learn more about the different cultures that live in Buffalo, the refugee populations and immigrant populations that live here, and, and also get to support a great organization that's doing great service work on behalf of these clients. Buffalo Without Borders to Go will continue the next two Mondays. Tonight's food from Burma. The next two will highlight Afghanistan and South Sudan. The family of a woman who was missing for months, still searching for answers tonight. Her body found in Chautauqua County, an area she had no known connections to. Marquita Mall's body was found off the rails to trails path in Portland. As Fevin Casahoon reports tonight, Mall's family still wants to know why she was in Chautauqua County and what happened to her. It's been a devastating time for the family of Marquita Mull. Her sister Wendy Mull tells me she is heartbroken and believes someone is responsible for her sister's death. You took a part of our heart, our soul, when you took that girl. Marquita Mull's loved ones are still trying to wrap their heads around the news of her death. What happened to her is, a, is horrific for us. I believe she was dumped there. She probably was, she was killed here. The 50 year old mother of three boys was found in Portland last month. Chautauqua County Sheriff's deputies say a hiker found human remains just feet away from her body. Mull's sister, Wendy, says that she doesn't know the friends her sister kept around, but hopes anyone who knows something will come forward. What could she have done so bad for somebody to kill her and dump her like that? What? She probably was trying to get away or knew she was in a situation she didn't want to be in, but they didn't have to throw her out away like that. They just, I basically, in my mind, they um, just tossed her. Wendy Mull says Marquita was joyful and always tried to help others who were struggling, even though she had struggles of her own. Don't don't judge her by her judge by her depression because depression is a mean thing. Marquita was a light. She was a great person. Like the uh, the homeless shelters and stuff. She was doing like going to community places and doing community work. She also says the family cannot have a funeral just yet since the investigation is ongoing. But she says she's grateful for law enforcement who were involved. I just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because. Me, Mary Williams, my family, we tried to find her and bring her home. And this was the result of bringing her home. So now I just want justice for Marquita because she was no threat to whoever did this to her. Now, I did reach out to the Chautauqua County Sheriff Jim Quatrone, who says that the office is continuing to work alongside the Buffalo Police Department, but have no updates yet. In studio, Fevin Castahoon, 7 Eyewitness News. Well, children in the South Towns now have a new place to bend it like Beckham. Yay! <laughs> the city of Lackawanna cut the ribbon on its new soccer mini pitch at Victory Playground. A $100,000 grant from the U.S. Soccer Foundation and Dick's Sporting Goods Foundation made it all possible. They just said, hey, we're, we, we want to build this in your place. Would you like it? And I, I was thrilled. I, I was, it, 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 uh, if there was ever a no-brainer decision I'm going to make, it was to accept this great uh, donation by the U.S. Soccer Foundation and the Dix Sporting Goods Foundation. We're, we're thrilled to be the beneficiaries of it. Well, local leaders say lights will be installed so kids can play on the pitch later into the day. Looks like a nice night for it. All right, turning out of the 7 First Alert forecast, Andy Parker joins us now as we push into Tuesday morning. Good morning, Andy. Hey, good morning. Yeah, if you've hung with us this long, I've got good news at least to deliver as we turn our attention to today, Tuesday, and also Wednesday. Let's take a look at what we have in downtown Buffalo. Skies cleared late in the day after watching some of those lake effect rain showers continue to plague us through about midday, and then those erased. You can see not only a couple of cars on the 190 here as we go past the midnight hour. 46 is the current temperature, but there's already 30s dotting the map inland, especially those valleys south of uh, the New York Pennsylvania line. I think a few on this side of the border as well. We'll call it some very crisp air beginning to settle in with light winds and clear skies. That's generally what happens. Nothing to look at on seven super Doppler. As a matter of fact, we're going to go a couple of days without rain. We could use a few of those and the warmth is now pushing back up into the Midwest and it will eventually send a little bubble of that over here. No 70s and 80s, but the 60s 
are going to feel nice after kind of a raw weekend. There's the cool, crisp air to begin the day, but the bounce back is pretty nice. 65 in the afternoon. We're looking for some sunshine there. Let me take you through the forecast, and uh, there's not a whole lot to show for the next 48 hours, but we'll talk about the next chance for rain after that. So enjoy your Tuesday. It is, or today, it is free and clear right on through the afternoon and evening hours. You'll be able to see nothing but a few fair weather clouds making it across the Great Lakes. Then near Chicago, Wednesday night, Night, we start to pick up the first hint of organized precip, then that becomes an issue for us and once we get to Thursday. Take a look at this uh, seven day forecast here, and really what I want to key on are those temperatures for tomorrow. These are the numbers that we begin with in the morning. As we go to the afternoon, look at how the north towns between 65 and 70, some portions of the southern tier are going to stay a little cooler in the low 60s. And then we get to Wednesday. Now, Wednesday looks like a pretty nice day when you just take in the clouds, but the wind got are going to be between 25 and 30 miles an hour. You see them there right during the middle of the afternoon. So Wednesday does come with an asterisk when it comes with that temperature. The rest of the seven day forecast looks like this. You can see, let's take it full and fill your screen. You can see the numbers there, uh, 53 degrees. So we go back down as we visit the uh, latter half of the work week there on Friday and then into the weekend temperatures with rain on Saturday, 55 there. That's it tonight, live from the weather outside, back in. All right, thank you, Andy. You have plenty more on the Music City heartbreak tonight, how the Bills can move forward after tonight's tough loss in Tennessee. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone. Join us tomorrow morning for the best post-game coverage you'll get. You're going to hear from fans as the Bills get off the plane after Monday Night Football. Plus, the IT team is taking an in-depth look at the mask guidance you'll have to abide by if you plan to fly for the holidays. Those stories and so much more tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Now with seven eyewitness sports, here's sports reporter Adam Unger. Tough go tonight for the Buffalo Bills. Primetime usually friendly to them as of late, but not tonight as they fall short to the Tennessee Titans. 34 to 31 the final from Nashville. The ball was in Josh Allen's hands in the final seconds for a goal line stand that sealed the deal for Tennessee. And take a look, the ball was in Josh Allen's hands an awful lot in this one. 35 of 47 for 353 pass yards, while the Bills had just 82 rushing yards over the course of the game. Josh Allen accounting for about a third of those. On the other side, though, Derrick Henry, the bell cow for the Titans, carried the rock 20 times for 143 of the Titans, 146 rushing yards, three touchdowns for King Henry as well. More than half of those came from his second quarter gash that we showed you earlier while Ryan Tannehill caught fire late to balance out the attack on offense for the Titans a little bit. Sports director Matt Bovey was there, and Matt, there's blame to go around on both sides of the football. Yeah, Adam, there absolutely is. And listen, I know everybody is going to be talking about the decision to go for it on fourth and inches at the end of the game. And it looks like Josh Allen slipped. And I'm sure this play is going to eat away at him for a long, long time because it's a play we have seen him make time and time again. But once again, mathematically, it says, you know, the math says that you should go for it in that situation. It's like 75% conversion rate or something along those lines. Maybe they could, you know, they could have kicked a field goal and then tried to win it in overtime, but it's a coin flip if you're even going to get the ball in overtime anyway. So it's going to be something that a lot of people talk about. The offense, they could have been sharper. Here's where the offense deserves the blame, though. They were just two of five in the red zone against the Titans tonight, while Tennessee, they were three of three. So that is something that they need to clean up. I actually think Josh Allen had a very strong day today even though everybody is going to be talking about how they came up just short on the play. And defensively, this was their worst game of the year. It's pretty obvious. Going into this game, they were awesome. And tonight they gave up 34 points, and that's largely because of the big chunk plays and allowing Derrick Henry to run all over them. Stopping the run is something this team has been really good at tonight. That was not the case. And another problem was they didn't get any sacks. And a lot of times quarterback pressures are a better stat to try and measure, you know, how much you were affecting the quarterback. They didn't have a ton of those tonight either. Tannehill had a little bit too much time, and he was picking them apart, especially in the second half in the middle of the field. So I think this was definitely the worst game for the defense. But I think Tennessee's offense is pretty good. And then on the Bills' offensive side of the ball, a couple mistakes, and they left just too many plays out there, especially in the first half. 
if you think, you know, if one of those field goals is ultimately a touchdown, maybe we're having a different conversation tonight. But the Bills now 4-2. and two. They head into the bye week with this loss. It's going to simmer for a long time. This is going to really bother these guys. And then they're back on Halloween against Miami. So we'll see what happens. We'll send it back inside to you. And, Matt, the numbers are the numbers. There's no denying it. But that long Derrick Henry touchdown, you take that away, he only really averaged just over three yards per carry. Matt, thank you. Safe travels back from Nashville. Now, take a look. We mentioned this earlier in the show. That Cardinals loss going into the bye week in 2020 was the impetus for a run that took the Bills all the way to the AFC title game. Here's a look at every game Sean McDermott has led going into the bye week. Tonight's loss knocks that record down to two and three on the year since he took over here in Buffalo. Again, a 34 to 31 Titans win on Monday Night Football right here on ABC. Jeff, we'll send it back over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Disappointing loss for so many tonight. Well, coming up, a taste of Buffalo, how one group made sure the Music City welcomed them with open arms when they arrived before tonight's game. Well, the city of good neighbors showed off its Buffalo strong spirit well before tonight's game. They made sure a taste of Buffalo made its way to Nashville. Labatt USA donated more than 600 orders of wings to healthcare workers in the Music City. This is part of Labatt's Buffalo Brings the Wings promotion they started last year. Labatt donated more than 100,000 wings to frontline workers during the peak of the pandemic. Love that. I love that. Now I want wings at 1221 in the morning. How about you? Hey, thanks for spending some time with us tonight. Didn't come out the Bills way in terms of the 34-31 loss. Complete coverage continues in the morning. 7 Eyewitness News continues as always on the app. Morning team back here at 5 a.m. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night.